confirm your word. We confirm your word with testimonies. We confirm your word with miracles. We confirm your word with healing, with signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, 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 Lord, we thank you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for the gift of life. Lord, we pray tonight, committing the service into your hand. Oh Lord, take over the meetings from today to the end of the service. Lord, take over in the name of Jesus. Any power, any spirit that have been assigned to attack this meeting will come against you in the name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, rebuke you. We lay embargo on you. We lay curfew on you in the mighty name of Jesus. We take authority over every foul spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree and declare the meeting open. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, visit us. Let there be testimonies. Let there be miracles. Let there be signs. Let there be wonders. Let there be salvation. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for being in the camp. In Jesus' mighty name, we call it down. Amen. Oh, so the Lord, amen to the Lord. Hallelujah! Just walk about, greet five people, welcome five people to the house of the Lord tonight. And His glory be seen, we will celebrate our Oh 
overcome. Because we overcome, and we'll understand it. That's a fire ball. Hallelujah. When the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in.
praise to the Lord. Hymn number 166. When we all get to heaven. Are you ready? Let's sing it together. When we all get to heaven.
Whenever the children of God meet and there is a shout, it means there is victory in the camp. Amen. The children of Israel got to Jericho and the weapon they had to use was the weapon of shout. Yes. And even as you have shouted tonight, in these Easter meetings, whatever is a wall of Jericho, they have already come down. Amen, amen, amen. Previously, as you clapped in the realms of the spirit, you have been slapping some demons. Come on, come you on, you have been slapping some agents. Come on, ay, 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 come, ay, on. Ay. come on. And when the ark of the Lord was being brought back to the city of David, David danced clamorously. Amen. He danced exuberantly. Amen. Till the linen effort had to fall. Yes. And people were getting broken hearts. Ah, people ah, were ah. getting heart attack. Ah. Because David was dancing. In this Easter meetings, as you dance, may your enemies cry. As you dance, ah, may your enemy have a heart glory, attack. Glory, glory. Ah. Thank you. Glory. We are about to enter into the word. When you board an aircraft, the pilot will say, We are about to take off. Yes. Fasten your seatbelt. Seat no movement in the plane. Yes. But tonight, here, yeah, there will be movement. Hallelujah. Tonight, Hallelujah. there will be shouting. Hallelujah. Tonight there will be jumping. Amen. Tonight there will be praising. Hallelujah. 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 We are taking off. Taking off. 77,000 feet. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. You are untouchable. You are unstoppable. You are unkillable. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask your neighbor, are you ready tonight? Are you ready tonight? God bless you all for coming. Amen. We have men of God here with us. God bless all of you, pastors, evangelists. God bless all of you for coming. God bless every one of you for coming. Amen. And tonight we want to appreciate the father of the house, who is also our host, our father, Pastor John Bente. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout Amen. of praise. Amen. have with us our main preacher all yes, the way from Alabama, USA. Come on! Come on! He's a man of impeccable record and integrity. Amen! Yes, sir. This year will be his 30th year. Amen. Visiting us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He is a brother. He is a father. Yes. He is a friend. Yes. He is a great man of God. Yes. He is a prophet by calling. Yes. And he came with his son and his media, the leader of the media team. And with a standing ovation. Without wasting much time, let us receive the ministry 
of Pastor Stephen L. Shelley from New Hope Revival Center, USA. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Emotional. For 30 years you have been my friends and my family. Amen. Hallelujah. You have prayed for me and welcomed me year after year. Amen. 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 It is my desire just to be an encouragement to you during these meetings. Amen. We are a blessed people. Amen. We serve a faithful God. We have a message that's still delivering the oppressed. Captives are still going free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If there's ever been a people who have a right to shout and praise the Lord and dance. It's this people. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Sir, anybody ever I was what dear son to He's been so good to us. You may be seated. I want to try to sing a song that I didn't I didn't send report, but you know the song. The blood will never lose its power. What key? What key will you play? Yes. Let's sing it together. 
in the house. Amen. Let's thank God Amen. for them. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to begin to look to the word this evening. Just before we do, I want to say one other personal thing to you. When uh, I first came to Ghana, as you know, I was an unmarried man. God gave me a beautiful, wonderful wife, and you celebrated with us. When each of my children came, Benjamin being first, then Joshua, then Olivia, and then Moriah. 
and Kwadanamu and Awabo Wandi Achraye. You celebrated with us. And now I want to tell you, uh, uh, those of you who don't know, that Benjamin, who is here, is now a married man. God has given him a beautiful wife, Jenna. I want to give honor to our, our father of the faith, uh, our wonderful pastor, Pastor Tay. He has, he has been a real friend to me and a great encouragement. We are always very blessed when he comes to visit us in Alabama. I want you to turn in your Bible this evening to 1 John chapter 2 beginning in verse 12 and going through verse 18. I will read it and then our brother interpreter will read. Verse, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven. Amen. Your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Amen. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. Amen. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. Amen. Verse, verse 15, heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that this is the last time. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated this evening. I want you to look at your neighbor just a moment. And, and I want you to say, neighbor, you have been anointed to overcome anything. 
everything. There is nothing that this bride cannot overcome. Amen. We have been chosen as overcomers. We have been anointed as overcomers. We have been elected to be overcomers. God's word will defeat this enemy any time, any place, and under any circumstances. The devil can't stop this little bride. She is anointed to overcome. Divorce can't stop this bride. Depression cannot stop this bride. COVID was not able to stop this bride. There is no disease and no circumstances that can stop this little bride. She must stay in the word. We must leave the world behind us. We cannot compromise in 2024. We must go back to the old landmark. We must go back to holiness and separation. We must not lower our standard. We must raise our standard even higher. We're not looking to draw a crowd. We're looking to see saints changed, people changed by the power of God. We don't have to compromise to reach out to the lost. We're not following the Pentecostal church. We're not following the charismatic church. We don't care what the Baptists are doing or the Methodists are doing. Or any other church on any corner. We are marching with the word. We must not look back to the spirit of denominationalism. It has arrested people. It brings death, not life. This message has brought life to a bride. It's still the truth. It doesn't matter who turns away from it. It doesn't matter who decides they don't believe this anymore. To prove they were never of us in the beginning. But we will never turn back. We will never retreat. We will stand on the word of God as our absolute. We will take every quote back to the word. This is our absolute. That's what this church is founded on. Bible believers fellowship. That's who we are. I said that is who we are. 
we might abbreviate it sometime BBF. But let us not forget what BBF stands for. We are Bible believers. This word of God shall never pass away. If you want to know what the Spirit is saying, He's talking to us from this book. I said the Spirit is talking to us from this book. And if the bride is going to say what the Spirit is saying, we're going to have to say what the Word says. So you let them twist all they want to twist. And deny all they want to deny. You must stand firm. We have been anointed to overcome anything. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I write unto you because you have over this little bride has been to the battle she has been to the war and God has given us again and again the victory and so now we carry back the spoils of the war and the spoils of the war is victory. I want you to shout victory. Shout victory. Victory doesn't come by our emotion. Victory is in Jesus. A fire is living inside of the believer. He has come to us. If the pillar of fire is living in you, then no sickness, no disease, no cancer, no heart condition, no sugar diabetes, no depression or oppression, no mental illness can defeat you. When the Holy Ghost is in you, you have all that was in the Father. What was in the Father, He emptied into the Son. What was in the Son, He emptied in to the Holy Ghost. That Holy Ghost came into the bride. All that was in the Father was in the Son. All that was in the Son is in this last day bride church. We've got to reach for more in 2024. There's one baptism of the Holy Ghost. But there are many refillings. I'm looking for a refilling of the Holy Ghost this weekend. You didn't hear me. I said I'm looking for a refilling of the Holy Ghost in these meetings this weekend. Here cometh the world. How many of you are born of God? Then you have power to overcome the television. You have power to overcome Hollywood. 
You have power to overcome YouTube. What will put us up at the YouTube was so good anymore. You have power to overcome Facebook. The only thing that that stuff is good for is to get the gospel out. Don't you let the devil lure you into his delights. Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. We don't let lust overcome us. We overcome lust. We don't, we don't let pride overcome us. We overcome pride. This little bride has been anointed to overcome anything. For whosoever is born of to every man is given a measure of faith. You've got to exercise your faith. What about to me? What about to me? When he lies to you, you speak your faith to him. You've got to speak your faith in this word. The letter killeth, but the spirit maketh alive. It's your faith that activates the word. I believe the word works. I believe it pushes back the darkness. I believe faith in this word gives us grace to overcome the world the victory. Can you say amen? Amen. In the message, faith is our victory, 1953. No, 58. Brother Branham said that day, if you'll only believe, you can see the glory of God. If you will only because we are believers. And Jesus said in his word, if we can only believe, we will see the glory of God. He said it to Mary and Martha. If you only believe, you'll see the glory of God. What kind of glory of God did they see? And faith overcomes death. Faith is the victory over death. Faith is the victory over sin. Faith is the victory over sickness. Faith is the victory over worry. We're human beings. And sometimes we worry about things before we ever have to face them. Before we have to face them. That we may never have to cross. We fret over situations that we may never even have to deal with. So tonight, faith is the victory over worry. So here's what he tells us. Faith is the victory over death, over sin, over sickness. 
He said, faith is the victory over frustrations. Does anybody here ever get frustrated? Let me see your hand. Oh. Only four or five of us. I suppose if I ask your family or your co-workers if you ever got frustrated, they would tell me yes. It's possible for all of us to be frustrated. To, to be aggravated. Now, so you're or agitated. And I say, but we hear from the prophet tonight that faith is the victory over frustrations. No more, you're cheerful, or you for animal some, and you may say, Jimmy and this, and yes, he tells us in spiritual amnesia that worry has no virtue at all. He said, worry can't do anything but make you worse. He said, worry has no virtue in it at all, but faith has all virtue. Faith has all virtue. In the, in the message, faith is our victory, he said faith is a conqueror. Faith is an overcomer. Faith is a peacemaker. It isn't just a peacemaker, he said it overcomes. He said, What does it do? What is faith? He said, It is to conquer. He said, Conquer and victory is the same. To, to conquer means to beat down. To override. To handcuff and throw into prison. Are you hearing me tonight? Faith in you has the power to handcuff the enemy. To arrest sickness. To arrest unbelief. To place it under handcuffs. To throw it into prison. To lock the door. So faith is the key to overcoming everything. He goes on to say it means that the sin that once ruled over you, faith in the word of God will give you dominion over every devil in hell. I don't know what has tried to rule you lately. But over these next few days, I'm believing that we're going to come into agreement with the Spirit. The spirit is saying the bride is free. The bride is overcoming everything. The bride is putting the devil under her feet. No sin, no worldliness. 
is going to rule in her life. The Spirit is saying, I'm raising up my bride with a new and anointed faith. A 100% faith. Absolutely Absolutely no unbelief. No doubt about it. The Spirit is saying, My bride is going to overcome everything. I'm believing that we're going to come into agreement. Like these young people who made the little video. The little video was made by some of the young people in this church posted on social media. And they were saying over and over again the spirit and the bride are saying the same thing. Come on now. The Amen. spirit and the bride to discover what the spirit is saying. The spirit will not say anything contrary to the word. It is our responsibility to discover what the spirit is saying. And then we come into agreement with what he is saying. And we began to repeat the same thing. The spirit and the bride are saying the same thing. The spirit and the bride are saying the same thing. The spirit and the bride are saying the same thing. The spirit and the bride are saying the same thing. It's the key to revival. It's the, it's the key to total deliverance. We have churches in America around this message. Who are telling their people? I will catch it and grow for them. It's all right to have these little things in your life. Yes, You just believe the message. And it's all right that you are doing smoking and drinking and whatever. It's all right. All right. Just love the Lord. Love the prophet. If you don't ever get your deliverance down here, you'll get your deliverance over there. I don't know about you, brothers, but that's not the message I believe. I do not accept that message. That message doesn't line up with this word. I don't care what Satan has bound you with. When you are a son of God, born of the spirit of God you are entitled to total deliverance I said you are entitled to total deliverance not 50% deliverance 100% total. God did not send this message to leave us in unbelief. He said, only believe. 
you will see the glory of God. He said the sin that once ruled you you will now rule over it. He said for a savior is more powerful than a sin. How many of you believe you have a savior that is more powerful than sin? If you believe that, I want you to stand to your feet a moment. I want you to shout to the king. I want you to lift up your voice. My savior is bigger than my sin. My Savior is more powerful than my sin. He said, faith is the victory that overcomes every curse. Every curse of the devil. And no me be ara every or say no na seta no witch be for be ara do ho can stand before the power of god be for be ara no wa ever to me ji na onyakopo atumi ni faith is the victory that overcomes every curse of the devil so tonight we turn this thing around our faith is in the Lord our faith is in the word of God our faith is in a powerful savior we turn this curse around we send it back to the devil we send it back to the enemy we take our dominion over every curse of the devil every lie that has been spoken about your life we take dominion over that now we put that under our feet in the name of Jesus faith is the victory that overcomes every curse of the devil we send it back where it came from Faith is your victory. Brother Branham asked us the question, faith in what? He said, not faith in your church. Not faith in your creed. Not faith in some man. But faith in Jesus Christ who made the promise. That's where our victory lies tonight. Our faith is not in our church. We love our church. We love our pastors. We love our leaders. Our faith is not in calling the name Brother Branham. Our faith is not in the organization voice of God. Our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. God is going to set you free if you're not already free. Because your faith is in Him. Shout amen. Amen. When you can climb into God, 
When you can climb into God by prayer. Until you can see. He's not talking about natural eyes. Your natural eyes will bring you into unbelief. You've got to overcome your five senses. You must refuse to let those five kings rule in your life. He's talking about spiritual eyes. When you can climb into God by prayer until you see the thing conquered under you. So now we have some instructions. We've got to do some mountain climbing. We've got to do some mountain climbing. One of the ways that we climb up into God is by fervent prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. At the beginning of this year, the Spirit of the Lord spoke in our church. And he said, this year is going to be a year for climbing mountains. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Let it be the same for you. Let this be the year for climbing mountains. Some mountains are to be spoken out of the way. And some mountains are to be climbed over. Do you understand? Some mountains are to be, to be made to disappear by the spoken word of faith. But there are some mountains in our life that we must climb over the top. Do you know what it means to overcome? It means to come over. We're not going under. We're going over. And if we can't get over, we'll go right through it. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I tell you what we're not going to do. We're not going to lay down and play dead. We're not going to lay down and act like we're dead. We are not dead. We are not defeated. We are not ruined. We are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. By the word of our testimony. This is your year to climb mountains. If you want to know what the Spirit's saying, He's telling you to get your mountain climbing shoes on your feet. He's telling you to get ready to climb over. You can't do that in sandals or flip flops. You've got to have real mountain climbing shoes. May your feet be shod with the preparation of peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
When the Spirit of the Lord spoke to us and said, this is going to be the year for mountain climbing, I said, Lord, how will we do that? He answered us in the spirit. And he said, be very sure-footed. Sure-footed. Footed. I don't know how that translates. Be very sure-footed. We have to know where we're standing. I will say Do you know where you are sure footed? I will say experience for me. It was a vision. Do you still believe in visions? And in this vision I heard five different voices speaking to me. I didn't see the person. But I heard the voices. My question was, how will we overcome this? How will we make sure that we're climbing mountains and we are very sure-footed? Suddenly I heard the voice of my dear friend, Brother Perry Green. I didn't see Brother Green, I just heard his voice. He said to me, whatever you do, keep your balance in the script. I knew immediately what he meant. This is what Brother Branham spoke to him personally. He knew that Brother Green was an excitable sort of fellow. He was bold enough to look him right in the face and say, Brother Branham, I perceive that you are a prophet like unto Elijah. Brother Branham held up his hand. He said, now, Brother Perry, we don't say much about that now. He said to him later, Brother Perry, whatever you do, keep your balance in the scriptures. I believe Brother Branham knew that Brother Green had a tendency to get out of balance. So he warned him. It's not comparing quote to quote. It's Do you hear me? It's comparing scripture to scripture. When we find a quote that speaks to our life, we must make sure that it fits well with the scripture. We're not overcoming by a prophet's opinion. We're overcoming by the word. Now don't you get offended with me for telling you the truth. A man's opinion is his opinion. And you can choose to agree with that opinion or not agree with that opinion. But when it comes to the scripture, you have no choice. The reason why I'm following this message is not because of a cloud. It's not because of a picture with a pillar of fire over Brother Adam's head. It's not because of a voice on the Ohio River. 
It's not because of a sword that came in his hand. It's not because he was visited by seven angels. I'm following this message because it lies right here in the absolute word of God. Men can deny the cloud, but they can't deny that this message is on the word. We must keep our balance. I was saying in the scriptures. The second voice I heard was the voice of Brother Branham himself. He spoke to me in this vision. Again, I didn't see him. I only heard his voice. He said, whatever you do, stay in the middle of the road. Stay in the middle of the road. These were instructions to help us stay sure-footed. Because this year, the bride is not sinking. The bride is climbing mountains. We've got to stay right in the middle of the road. I was saying to be a chin of quite a pimpy. Brother Branham said that's the highest part of the road. Was a way and a quite a pimpy. I was saying when the rain comes, sir, is your air top? It washes the trash into the gutters. What you mean was a proper Ebola, a cocoa gutter. But he said, if you'll stay in the middle of the road, was it? I was a witch in a quite a pimpy. You'll be walking in the way of holiness. Who bad Nancy? I will crown cry a more. When I was in the Pentecostal church, they used to preach about the highway of holiness. But Brother Branham wasn't preaching about a highway of holiness. He said, that's not what Isaiah said. He said, Isaiah said, and there shall be a highway there. Now see, Isaiah said, and a way. A highway and a way. And the way shall be called the way of holiness. No fool or unclean thing shall err therein. So in Pentecost, I began to see that there were two roads. A highway would be there and a way of holiness. I saw them in my mind as two separate things. But Brother Branham had a different revelation. He said there is a highway there and then in the middle of the road there is a way not another road but in the middle of the road is the way of holiness I love that revelation we're not walking on some other way somewhere we're walking on the way of holiness which is the middle of the road. If you start picking up the world you'll slide off into the gutter. Is anybody hearing me now? In the United States, well, America, my mo, the sisters' dresses are getting shorter. 
They're getting tighter. They're wearing more jewelry than they have ever wore before. Some of the sisters in the churches look exactly like Brother Branham said. They've gone through the dime store or the dollar store with the magnet. And all these jewels and baubles and necklaces have 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 been drawn to them like a magnet. Church, that might be the highway, but that's not the way. Brothers, that may be the highway, but that is not the way. We are called to the way of holiness, which is the middle of the road. Please don't follow the example of the American Message Church. Please don't move to America and think you're going to find a church like this one. In America, they are few and far between. Many are walking in the highway. But very few are walking in the way, the middle of the road. So Brother Green says to us, whatever you do, keep your balance in the scripture. Brother Branham says, whatever you do, stay in the middle of the road. Then I heard, I hope this doesn't offend you, then I heard a The story is too long and it's too supernatural to even take the time to tell this evening. But she was dear to me. And that's why I believe I heard her voice. You know, I don't believe in women preachers. But I believe in sisters who love the Lord. Brother Branham says a woman has every right to every spiritual gift except handling the word. That That means she can have the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. She can have discerning of spirit. Speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues. She can prophesy. Are you here? She's not a part of the fivefold ministry. But she has every right to these other spiritual gifts. I hope you won't be offended at me. When I'm sick, I call the sisters. You hear how quiet it got there to start with? I know who can get a hold of God for me. I have confidence in the men in my church. I have confidence in the brothers in my church. But I know what I have seen God do through the prayers of mamas and grandmamas in my church. In the study there where we were before we came in here. Thank you there's a picture there from many years ago when we visited Ghana. 
My precious mother, who has gone to be with the Lord, was with us on that trip. And several other brothers and sisters sitting in that picture there is Brother Hawk's mother-in-law. The mother-in-law of, of our Brother Hawk. Her name is Sister Isabel Weems. She was once here among us. Her testimony is being here changed her life forever. She is over 85 years old. She is still a prayer warrior. So I know what a sister can do when she puts her faith in action. This particular woman had written a little uh, a book on praise. I, all I can tell you is this is what she said. Her voice spoke out. Whatever you do, praise until the spirit of worship comes. Worship until the glory comes. Sorry, a rade copemus and nominum ebeba, and then stand in the glory. I say, oh God, let us see your glory in this house. I knew why the Lord let me hear her words. As Brother Branham said here, we climb into God by prayer. I know there is another way that we climb into God. By, by exuberant praise. When we praise, we're going after something. When we dance, we're going after something. True anointed praise scatters the demons. His bride must become the very personification of praise. Praise must not be what we do. It must be what we are. We were born to be worshipers. Did you hear me? We were born to be worshipers. It's not what we do. It's who we are. And then I heard another voice. The fourth voice. It was a friend that I met among the denominational churches. I was a little surprised to hear his voice. But he was an old man. Now with the Lord. And he had an experience in his early ministry. And in that ministry, he stood in the presence of the Lord. In that experience. And he was asked one question. He wasn't asked, what church do you go to? Who your pastor is? What prophet do you follow? He was asked only one question. And so his voice spoke to me in my experience. And he said, whatever you do, remember, you must learn to love. Love. 
Love is a key. We're not tolerating one another. We're learning to love one another. You've got to be able to pray for your enemy with the same enthusiasm that you pray for your family. When my friend had his experience many years ago, he said there was a woman standing in front of him in the line. He noticed that her hands were were drawn and that arthritis had, had drew up her hands. When the Lord looked at her, he asked her one question. Did you learn to love? She said, Lord, I loved you. I learned to love you. But I never could learn to love your people. She said, my husband left me when I was a young woman. And I allowed bitterness to enter into my heart. And I never really learned to love other people. I stayed to myself. He said that the Lord said to her, I wasn't there. It was not my experience. He said that the Lord spoke to her and said, You can go in because you loved me but there will be no reward now don't be mad at me or offended I'm just telling you what he said happened to him he said there was another woman there she was a large black woman she had been a soul winner on the earth Everywhere, every bus she rode, she told somebody about Jesus. Every, every trip to the market, she told somebody about Jesus. Every place that she went, she found an opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. And the Lord asked her, did you learn to love? She said, oh, yes, Lord. I learned to love you and I loved your people. And the Lord said, yes, you did. You loved them enough to tell them about me. So enter in to the joys of the Lord. Your reward is great. He said the Lord reached down and kissed her on the forehead. And in she went shouting and dancing. So I want to just say to you. It's very important if we're going to climb mountains this year. We have to learn to love one another. I will say yes, yes, say about to do you home. And to forgive one another. If you're holding a grudge against somebody, you've got to let that go. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
You're looking at me like I don't know who I'm talking to. I know who I'm talking to tonight. I'm talking to the little bride of Jesus Christ. The devil doesn't like it when we get together in unity. The devil doesn't like it when we love one another. But we've got to learn to love one another. Now say If you believe that, say amen. I'm not going to tell you tonight, number five. I'm going to hold that for another service this weekend. I want to read you one more little quotation. And I'm going to close tonight. I'm looking forward to everything that God has for us in this meeting. In a little message called When It What It Takes to Overcome All Unbelief. Brother Branham said this When God speaks to a man, he has faith. And he has ambition. And he has a purpose. When God speaks to a man, he gives him a purpose. When God speaks to a man, he gives him ambition. And when God speaks to a man, he gives him faith to do it. To accomplish it. To achieve what his purpose in life is. So whatever God has called you to do. He has placed in you the faith to do it. Faith to overcome all things. I want you to stand with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith in God can move a mighty mountain. Faith in God can calm the troubled sea. Faith can make a desert like a fountain. Faith can bring the victory. Faith in God can move a mighty mountain faith in God can calm the troubled sea faith can make a desert like a fountain faith can bring the victory try to sing with me oh faith in God can move a mighty mountain. Faith in God can calm the troubled sea.
unção. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. I don't know what you're carrying tonight. But I want you to know there's one among us this evening who has stronger shoulders than you and I. Amen. He wants to help you carry your load. I don't know what has been troubling your heart but there is one here among us tonight who will calm the troubled waters of your mind when he speaks peace all turmoil has to go Amen. I don't know what you've been fighting in your body but the anointing that you have received to overcome can take care of whatever your sickness is some of you have been troubled in your mind you have felt at times like you were losing your mind. I want to tell you tonight that is a lie. The Bible said he will keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So no matter what your need is, Jesus is here. I said Jesus is here to meet that need. I want you to bow your head just a moment. I want you to if you are here tonight and you have a need on your heart, I want you to just lift up your hand. There are hands everywhere. God has enough grace to minister to each one of your needs this evening. I'm going to pray. I want you to pray. And when we have finished praying, I want the, the worship team to lead us in a victory song because we're not going home tonight sad we're going home full of hope the anointing to overcome everything is ours this weekend we're going to take God at his word and we're going to praise him until the victory comes let's pray heavenly father tonight we have come together in this house our mind is stayed on you we were not here to see one another we have come to see you and you have been among us through the praise through the worship and through the word. You saw every hand that went up in this place that represented a need. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing of God to every life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing to overcome Amen. anything that is represented by that hand. We rebuke the devourer. Yes, Lord. We take authority over Satan. Hey. We take dominion over all of his lies. Hey. We climb the mountain of God through fervent prayer. Amen. And we sing and testify the victory is ours. Amen. 
we say to the enemy, you must bow. Amen. Jesus lives in this little bride. Our faith in you, Lord, gives us victory over all sickness, over all sin, over all mental oppression. And in the name of Jesus, we take our healing. We take our deliverance. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we take our freedom. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we take our victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we confess we have the overcoming anointing. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we confess we are mountain climbers. Amen. And we are overcomers in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The saint said, Amen. Amen. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. Victory is mine. You know, when we talk about more than conquerors, more than a conqueror, Amen. Jesus went to the cross. He was crucified and he was beaten and he died. And you and I have received a check. The check is for your salvation. Amen. The check is for your deliverance. Amen. The check is for your healing. The check. As I said, this is just the appetizer. Come on. Tell your neighbor, get ready for the real deal. Get ready for the real deal. We are continuing tomorrow. It will be fireworks. Amen. Tell your neighbor, share the fire. Share the fire. Share. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We will quickly take our offerings. Offering time. Yeah, and please remember, everyone outside Tema, Nungwa and Ajay Kojo, everyone who is not from Tema, Nungwa and Ajay Kojo, you will take your tithes back to your local church. Amen. 
that with the offerings, the seeds, the pledges, the vows, you will all bring it to support the work of God and to expand the kingdom of God. A lot has gone into this convention. And therefore, as you honor the Lord with your offerings and your sacrifices, the Lord will replenish you in a thousandfold. <laughs> Friends, and let's pray over them. Let's pray. Say after me. Say, Oh Lord, I have brought my